no mistake about it, capitalism is failing for most of the people in the world today because its immediate or most recent enemy, not its only enemy, but its most recent enemy called communism collapsed. And all the world said, good, we accept the capitalist system and it isn't working in the majority of the world. Forty years ago, people started massively moving towards cities and towns all throughout the third world. When they were out in the countryside, they could only really do one thing, which is be farmers. Now, all of a sudden, the possibility of diversifying and actually having a gratifying life has increased. We all talk about a global economy and a global world, and yet, we know very little about how two-thirds of the world lives and what it's up to. And it is important that we get acquainted with them because they are the majority of the world's population. There is really no difference between the rich and the poor. They all want the same things. The first thing these people want are homes. Or they want constructions in which they can be sheltered when they do business. They want infrastructure. They want schools. They want shops. Uh, they want exactly the same things. They migrated. This is where they want to be. This is where they realize subconsciously that the division of labor is going to work in their favor and either we give them a stake in the game or they're going to bring down the existing game as many times as necessary until they're able to participate in it. Wherever you go in the developing world you will see lots of children. In the 18th and 19th century the Industrial Revolution began in Europe and lots of little kids like this, the Oliver Twists of the Europeans, came into the cities with the purpose of joining the broader, wealthier economy. And just like Oliver Twists, they've come here to be part of the capitalist game. And they're watching TV, and they're looking at newspapers, they're looking just over the hill. And now they know how you live in the West, and they want that. What a market economy is about, what a capitalist system is about, is people that cluster together spontaneously to try and divide labor among themselves in such a way as to be more productive. They get together like they're doing here. First of all, very precarious uh, huts, as you can see, uh, built sometimes with debris, with garbage, that eventually one day will become houses, like houses anywhere else. But that's the way capitalism begins. Obviously, if poor people and the excluded have migrated towards the cities and the towns, it's because they want to be included in the system. But they haven't been able to be included, among other things, because they found a large paper wall that obstructs their entry. In other words, the legal systems are simply unfriendly to poor people. Legal complications are what history is made of. Simplification is relatively recent. Two-thirds of the world's population, four billion people, are locked out of the capitalist system. They want to participate, but they can't, because participating means being able to make safe contracts with everybody, being able to get credit, having an identity that will be recognized on a broad scale throughout the world, and having the possibility to organize production so that they can enter foreign markets. They can't. So what they've done is created their own legal system, what we call the extra-legal system. That's why we don't term it illegal. Extra-legal does not mean lawlessness. It means that they're outside the formal written legal system, but that they have their own rules, very specific ones on how to hold on to property, 
how to differentiate between owners, how to make contracts, how to enforce contracts, how to give credit, how to respect families, how to create families. Extra legal simply means that outside the formal legal system, a new system is being created made of customs and procedures that people consider legitimate and efficient. Here, what you can see behind me in those buildings, in the high rises, in the glass structures, are what is the minority in any developing or former Soviet Union country. We're the westernized people. We live very much like most of the citizens in the North Atlantic, in the developed countries of Asia. But in fact, we are a minority. We are really the marginals of the country. We are not the mainstream. The fact is that the majority of the people work and live outside the legal system. These people are the engine of growth. Without hardly any assistance from the outside world, they are changing slums into cities. It's these people that produce the wealth. These people have assets. The total value of their homes in Peru is about $80 billion. They've got shops and they have an identity. There is no way an entrepreneur can really create huge amounts of wealth unless he's got all these tools of the law that we take for granted. And we even forget that most of us didn't have access to them until the 1850s when in New York Dudley Smith was the first to make reforms in the world so that you could create a company in the U.S. without an act of Congress. So we've got to understand that either we quickly make capitalism friendly to the majority, or that majority will find an alternative ideology, as it always does. It could be called communism, it could be called fascism, it could be called al qaedism it could be called castrism. It'll find an alternative, because people are governed by ideas. Don't be fooled. Poverty doesn't incite people to terrorism. People get angry and violent, and terrorism grows when people feel excluded. The first way to beat terrorism is make everybody feel that they're part of the society. Bring them in, and we will have less problems with terrorism. You know, the more I think about this, this film project is really very important because two-thirds of the world, from Iraq to Afghanistan to Peru to China, actually live like this. This is the challenge. So if you can picture this, put it into your mind, it'll be much easier to take the right policy decisions. Films are very important. You can't understand this unless you really see it.